In this ABB blog installment, I will show you a drawing that I had done of a very interesting interdimensional elemental. This particular being made her, his, its presence known to me as I traveled about interdimensionally using my ethereal body. But before I reveal my depiction and description of the being, allow me to briefly cite how these things are possible. I am doing this particularly for those of us who are just coming into this level of awareness or remembrance. Indeed, we are multidimensional or multi-layered. This simply means that we are actually more than flesh and bones. There are components, layers, or parts of our totality that is unseen and not bound by the laws and physics of our current focus or vibratory bandwidth. For instance, we already know that matter appears to be physical and is therefore very real and solid to matter. However, the same sense of perception and reality would be true from the mind's perspective of spirit. Hence, just like we experience and perceive in and with molecules of matter, the molecules that constitute spirit will appear just as solid, physical, and real to spirit. Hence, ether will appear real and solid to ether, organic light will appear real and tangible to organic light, the astral will appear real or physical to the astral, and so on. So you see, physicality or what is real is all a matter of perceiving from the molecular structure, form, and makeup of the respective vibratory layer that our mind and awareness has aligned itself to or with. Neither of these elements can or will appear solid or physical to their opposite makeup because each element or layer has different laws in physics. They each have their own unique rate of vibration and composition. Within each of the dimensional layers and structures previously mentioned, there are entities, life forms, beings, expressions, and organisms that exist. Of course, if we were to actually see into these realms, many of those energetic expressions would appear strange or alien to our limited scope of awareness. Keep in mind that we are all a part of each element and dimensional layer previously outlined. This again is what I mean by stating that we are multidimensional and it does not matter if we are consciously aware of this fact or not. Because above all of these layers, you, we, are mind, consciousness, and awareness. We simply merge our mind, consciousness, and awareness with different modes or vehicles of expression such as organic light, matter, ether, spirit, gas, etc. in order to experience and be present within these respective vibratory layers or realities which may appear to be immaterial transparent or invisible to their opposite structure or molecular rate of vibration and frequency. So what I've just explained should give you guys a better idea as to why there is no such thing as death. Only the shifting to a different reality, dimension, frequency, body, or mode of expression. Transformation. And contrary to popular belief, the brain does not produce consciousness or awareness, and scientists are learning this to be a fact. The brain is a conduit for consciousness and awareness to remain anchored in and experience dense matter by way of a physical body, so that the greater you, us, can experience dense matter. And the reasons for us choosing to do this or the reasons for us being here varies the brain operates with the functionalities of the physical vessel, not consciousness itself. The same is true when we merge with any or all of our other multidimensional layers. So now that we've gotten the very basics out of the way, let's talk about elementals. Elementals are comprised of some of the same materials as us. However, many of them 
as with other entities and beings, are able to willfully move their awareness or form in and out of dimensional layers. They may use a different body or vehicle adjacent to their main vehicle, or they can at will speed up or slow down their rate of vibration in order to appear real, solid, or present in the density or reality of their interest. Unlike the average human on Earth, elementals have not lost their awareness of their total makeup, nor their connection to nature or the nature of reality. Although the eyes and heart of the pure-hearted and innocent have seen these beings due to their free-spirited nature and open minds. This is why babies, children, and animals tend to sense and see elementals and other life forms for that matter, aka imaginary friends, <laughs> far more easily and frequently than the average adult. They are not as dense condition, manipulated, socialized, brainwashed, corrupted, polluted, or detached as we are by the time we become adults having a human experience. On the other hand, it appears that some elementals are drawn to and even fascinated by babies, children, animals, and certain adults who possesses a pure heart and childlike qualities. Speaking of which, I'm sure that the great Michael Jackson was not only a natural at astral projection, but he too has seen his fair share of elementals and other interdimensional forces and intelligences. But I digress. I would now like to tell you about my most recent experience with an elemental that hails in the fifth dimension. I was able to interact with this being by way of my ethereal body, which is a far less dense copy of my current physical body. Of course, the ethereal form or copy is not bound by the laws and physics of gravity and extreme limitations that the dense physical layer is enslaved to or bounded by. I was roaming about and exploring in the fifth dimension when this elemental came up to me. elemental appeared to be a luminous and unique shade of beige. It was about the height and size of an earth hummingbird. It appeared to be a combination of a praying mantis, albino turtle from the neck up and bird. I distinctly recall it having large oval-like human eyes and although it had small wings compared to its small onion-shaped bottom half, it appeared to be just floating in mid-air like a feather. I felt a warmth from its presence and although it didn't make a sound, it was a great communicator. How so, you may be asking? By way of those strange hair-like antennas on its back. just knew that it wanted me to touch the stems on its back, and so I did. So I reached my right hand over the back of the creature hovering in front of me. I then opened my hand, palms face downward, and had begun gently patting down or lightly pressing down on the antenna-like stems on her, his, its back. As I had begun slowly and gently patting on the stems on its back, the stems had begun bending, extending outwardly and multiplying. It was as if those stems had a mind and consciousness independent of the elemental. 
I also distinctly remembered how those stems felt to my ethereal senses. It felt just like I was patting a thick, tall, and soft afro. I kid you not. Here's something else interesting. As I patted the stems on the creature's back, their head and neck appeared to dematerialize or go invisible as it remained floating in midair. The interaction and exchange reminded me so much of how our pets respond to us when we give them love and attention as we pat them or rub them on their backs. Earth animals show and express an appreciation and love for this kind of touch, and this elemental creature responded to my touch much in the same way. Information was exchanged as well as some love vibrations. I was so reminded that I had interacted with this creature and others like it many times before. It's all so fascinating, don't you think? This is again the true nature of reality. There is far more to you and your surroundings than meets the eye. And I will continue to use my stories, unique expression, revelation, gifts, and talents to inspire or remind us or be a catalyst for those of us who are open, willing, and ready to discover or rediscover the infinite wonder and greatness that lives and thrives within, without, and around us. So stay tuned for more revelations, true otherworldly stories, messages to humanity, and more. And thank you for sharing this moment with me. Happy travels!